this, this, this uh, post-war rules-based international order that all the highfalutin people in the uh, Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times of London and on Morning Joe, those geniuses, right? <laughs> right? Every day they're on that. They fail to, they fail to understand that's, a, that's an inextricably linked network of commercial relationships, trade deals, capital markets, and a security guarantee by guess who? The sons and daughters of this audience. Couldn't really follow exactly. The what sons and daughters, doing. what? Our sons and daughters are running I don't what know, the world? Uh, I didn't realize we had that much power. Well, well, I know you're Jack. Geniuses, I know guys? Jack geniuses. is. Uh, but the rest of that made no guys. sense. I think he's saying that we're all members of the Illuminati. Well, I know that a my Goldman son, Zach. Jack, is very powerful. Um, yeah. He's a nine, but uh, he's seizing control. I don't know if you've seen. He, there's a couple of. Things going down right now, and let's just say, well, you can read about what the, the heck financial was he talking times. about? Got to play the one there. You can't decide. Well, George, how old? George? George is eight. Yeah, so. by the time oh. they're ten, they're going to own half the banks in Europe. Yeah, and then there's no they're... doubt about it. Uh, and Jack also, he's got, he's working very hard right now on uh, coming. It, Actually, you know, you got to come over the top. Yeah. I always tell them, you got if you're gonna, you got to come over the top because <laughs> where you through. go, yeah. when you and you got to finish through, and as you fit it, where you. Like right there, you got to finish there if you want to throw strikes. Because a lot of times he comes like that and it wanders off, yeah. like oh. over there. Yeah. So sort of like that did. We're talking about two things over dinner. One, follow through. Yeah. Right. Let the momentum take you down, and you go right to the strike zone. And two, uh, how he's going to seize Deutsche Bank <laughs> over the next six months. He, politely, he, knowing Jack, yeah. politely. Well, Jack Very. is extraordinarily polite and just, but like yeah, mergers yeah. and acquisitions is his thing. Mm -hmm. Just kind of the wind up delivery pitch. He still has to work a little more of that. Well, what about George? Maybe that's why he's over. so distracted with the pitching because he's thinking about the M&A. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that yeah, just comes to him automatically. That was an unbelievable performance last night by uh, Mr. Bannon. Rambling, but I know yes. we're going to play more of. Well, we're, uh, we're, many levels. we're talking about I'm not that sure part. I couldn't but follow. To 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 have him <laughs> attack Mitt Romney. Yeah. And Mitt Romney's missionary work. Leave us aside. Uh, and I think even Mitt Romney's family. Uh, and uh, attack one of the most decent men I've ever met in public service. Uh, just shows you how horrified he is, how frightened he is at the prospect of Mitt Romney running in Utah and getting into the Senate. Like you can, there's there's such easy tells. He's last night was more about Mitt Romney than Roy Moore, from what I've seen. He and he attacked, he just attacked everything about Mitt Romney. Which how interesting that he's talking, he's attacking Mitt Romney. Because he was a missionary uh, in the 1960s, and yet you look at the guy that he worships, Steve Bannon, Donald Trump, five deferments for bone spurs, uh, while he's playing football and golfing, and it's it's. It's unbelievable. Well, um, we have Mike Barnacle with us and national affairs analyst for NBC News and MSNBC, John Hellman, former aide to George W. Bush White House and State Department's Elise Jordan, columnist and associate editor for The Washington Post, David Ignatius. And let's continue with that thought. Here's more of what Steve Bannon, as he, uh, what he said as he plunged even deeper into Alabama's Senate race. You hid behind your religion. You went to France to be a missionary while guys were dying in rice paddies in Vietnam. Do not talk to me about honor and integrity. You, had, you ran for commander in chief, you had five sons, not one day of service in Afghanistan and Iraq. We have 7,000 dead and 52,000 casualties. And where were the Romneys during those wars? You have the guts to get on the stage of a man that served in Vietnam and you expect us to believe honor and integrity? Judge Roy Moore has more honor and integrity in that pinky finger than your entire family has in its whole DNA. So, John Holland, what's, what, what, what's um, Mr. Bannon what's trying to do right there? here? <laughs> I didn't hear a lot of reaction. No, I'm just curious. Well, I, 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 the what, do you, thing, what do you think? I mean, what's the strategy there? Well, he's, you know, uh, and, and Romney Anger. is among, among those who yesterday uh, decided, as the rest of the Republican Party has decided in one way or the other, to kind of meekly and sheepishly go along in some way with, with Donald Trump 
having thrown in his lot with, with Roy Moore. The Republican National Committee now is behind Roy Moore. You got a lot of these uh, senators who called for disowning Moore who are now kind of saying, well, I guess we don't have any choice but to go along. You got Mitt Romney, who's still out there plugging away, fighting the good fight against Roy Moore. Mm -hmm. And I guess he is now the most prominent, large-scale national Republican leader who's still leading the charge against Roy Moore. So Bannon sees him as the, as the enemy du jour. I mean, I'm struck mostly by what you said, Joe, which is a kind of amazing yeah. for a person who is the person who claims credit for putting Donald Trump in the White House right. to be attacking anyone for having not served in Vietnam, given so, Donald Trump's record on service. So, so Donald Trump uh, in 1968 stood at six foot two, an athletic build. He played football, tennis, squash, mm. golf. His medical history was. Uh, not blemished. Loved golf. <clears throat> Other than he had a routine appendectomy when he was age 10. And yet, um, Willie Geist, uh, Donald Trump got five deferments. Uh, got, got deferments for bone spurs. And the New York Times reports that on the day he graduated from college, from an Ivy League college after getting five deferments, on the day he graduated from college, 40 Americans were killed in Vietnam on that one day alone. And here we have in Alabama, uh, Steve Bannon daring to talk about deferments. Yeah, four of those are for college for President Trump. One of those were, was for bone spurs. Beyond the obvious hypocrisy of that point about military service, you watch that rally and you wonder what the purpose was. Were we there to elect Roy Moore if you're Steve Bannon? Or were you there to serve some purpose that's about you? And to me, that was the purest distillation of where American politics has gotten that I've seen, which is that your political opponents aren't just wrong, they're evil, they're corrupt, they're your enemy. Well, and this, is, this is where we are in Steve Bannon's world, and he was talking about a vote for Doug Jones being a vote for the Clinton agenda. There is no Clinton agenda. She's at home in the woods in Chappaqua. There's no Clinton agenda. He was making up boogeymen. It was a bizarre performance. Well, and he said it, it wasn't about Roy Moore, it wasn't about Donald Trump. He's trying to distract, but then he makes it about Mitt Romney, and again, you have, here you have five deferments from Donald Trump and 40, 40 dead uh, in, in service the day he graduated. And I think what strikes me the most is just how stupid both Donald Trump and Steve Bannon think people in Alabama are. Like those people in the audience, they think that they're stupid. Mm. Because they, those people in the audience, they're smart people, they know that Donald Trump had five deferments. They probably even know that 40 people died on the day that Donald in Trump... In Fairhope, Alabama? Very smart. Yeah. The, that's the, a great group. The, the They've Donald, been down there a lot. Yeah. That Donald Trump, on uh, the day he graduated from an Ivy League college, because his millionaire dad let him get into that Ivy League college, uh, helped him get into that Ivy... Because he wasn't really smart enough to get into the Ivy League college. Just wasn't. Uh, his dad gets him into an Ivy League college, and he's a playboy there. And on the day he graduates, 40 people die in Vietnam. People in Fairhope, Alabama know that, Mike. Well, you know, last night's performance was predictable. It was depressing. It was Steve Bannon playing a part that he's carved out for himself. And it plays to what, the, what is happening in our politics, both sides, actually, but especially the Republican side, led by President Trump and Steve Bannon. And it's their ability to hone in on resentment. They know how to extract resentment from yeah, but, 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 but at least 98 percent, I want everybody to breathe this fact in. Here, this guy's coming in out of nowhere. Neither he nor Donald Trump are Republicans. In 2012, Mitt Romney got 98 percent of the Republican vote in Alabama in 2012. Yes, he also won 60% of the entire state, Democrats and Republicans, whereas Roy Moore in his election that year in Alabama only won 51%. So based on 2012, Mitt Romney might actually be more popular in general election than Roy Moore. 
This, though, last night was just a display that was all about Steve Bannon. He's coming in. He's an outsider, Goldman Sachs banker, lecturing all of these Alabama people about how all the globalists are out to get you. It just is incredibly incredible irony to think that people in Alabama are that dumb where they don't see through that this outsider is coming down to yeah. lecture. Steve Bannon, he does think, unfortunately, and he's dead wrong, that people in Alabama are so stupid that they'll let a guy that worked in Hollywood mm -hmm. with our friend Jeff Quantinitz at the firm, worked in Hollywood for years, worked at Goldman Sachs, and, and uh, like, like, it, it claims to have made a gazillion dollars off of Seinfeld, that this guy's going to come to Alabama, Mika, as some, you know, favorite, favorite son. Yeah, a favorite son, a sort of man of the people, when if you ask certainly anybody that serves in Alabama, what is the greatest, what's one of the greatest developments in Alabama's economy over the past decade? Mercedes-Benz coming to Tuscaloosa. The people of Tuscaloosa doing such a great job with Mercedes-Benz that Mercedes-Benz actually said it was one of the most productive, uh, profitable plants uh, in the world. And I think they're now at their second or third class of, of Mercedes cars that they make in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, because Alabama does such a good job. So I, you see, his problem is he thinks it's 1962 in Alabama. And you know why? That's because he's a Yankee who worked at Goldman Sachs. It's, he's a Yankee who worked in Hollywood. And he's just pretending he doesn't know the culture there any more than a guy from uh, uh, Wall Street would know the culture. Uh, it's, uh, you know, somewhere else in, so in North Dakota. Does he think it's 1972 or does he think it's the primary where it appeared to have worked? I mean, a lot of these tactics worked. No, he thinks it's Donald Trump's America. Well, <laughs> that's what he thinks. Well, what is uh, what is Donald Trump's America, Mika? I think I, it's other, a other than very the, sad place. Donald Trump's America is, is actually an America where two out of three Americans disapprove of the president. Donald Trump's America is an America where we have a president who has the lowest approval ratings in the history. Mm -hmm of this country. Donald Trump's America is where actually we're moving to a place where two, one out of three Republicans I don't disagree now, with this. Elise, are saying they want somebody else to run for president in 2020 other than Donald Trump. Donald Trump's America is a place where most Americans are offended by Donald Trump. Well, and to thread the needle between Republicans who want a Republican agenda and they want to see success with a Republican majority, but they just have, they aren't sure these days, they don't approve of the Trump constant antics. That's the needle that I wonder how we thread. And so let's take a step back and think about what all that fire and brimstone was from Steve Bannon, all that looking at the camera and pointing and screaming. It was to put into the United States Senate a man who has been credibly accused of pedophilia, yeah. a man who was credibly accused of sexual assault against a 14-year-old, dating 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, and then lying about it later, saying at a rally last week, I don't know any of these women, which is patently untrue when you hear their stories. That's what he's so worked up about. That's what he's putting it on the line for. That's what the RNC is going back in for. That's what Mitch McConnell and establishment Republicans in Washington are putting their careers on the line for. Is it worth it, guys, for Roy Moore? For yeah. Roy Moore? You want to put all this out on the line for Roy Moore? Well, Think about and it. Women of Alabama, also, is I'm it thinking, worth it? I'm thinking of so many uh, friends that I've had uh, that, that I still have, people I still consider friends, David Ignatius, who are friends, who have been friends, who ha consider Mitt Romney their close friends, who helped fund Mitt Romney's campaign in 2012. Uh, and yet now, are, are they going to, and I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm afraid the answer is yes. Do they continue to stand by a man and uh, his associate uh, who absolutely trash everything about Mitt Romney, trash Mitt Romney's character, trash Mitt Romney's religion, trash Mitt Romney's uh, uh, missionary service, trash Mitt Romney's family, trash Mitt Romney's children. I mean, 
is it really? I, I, it's shocking. I, I, very few things should shock you or me about Washington anymore. This does shock me. How 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 many people just throw away past it's friendships? A, you know, Joe, it's a, it's it's another uh, roundhouse swing from Steve Bannon. It's a reminder that he's running an insurgency, and that Donald Trump is really the candidate of that insurgency. Its base keeps getting smaller, but it's an insurgency against the traditional Republican Party and its leadership. I mean, we we heard it as clear as can be last night. That's who they're going after. They they want to take them down. It, the, the painful thing to me is to is to is to watch uh, those mainstream Republicans who really are threatened by Bannon cringe uh, on Capitol Hill because they're afraid. They, they're afraid of that 33 percent. They're afraid of that small group that's supporting the insurgency. I get, we showed a poll for people driving the car. 31% of Republicans want somebody else to run for president in 2020. Uh, only 63% of Republicans want Donald Trump to run for president. If that question was asked for Democrats about Barack Obama, uh, one year after he was sworn in, the numbers would be in the 90s. If you asked it about George W. Bush in 2000, end of 2001, the number would be in the 90s. If you ask a question about Bill Clinton in 1997, the numbers would be in the 90s. This is this is the mirage, and this is what I don't understand. This is what it, it, this is basic. It's elemental. We've been saying it for 10, 11 months now. He's got a 33 percent coalition. And yet the Republican Party is destroying themselves and now embracing a man who's been accused of being a pedophile. <laughs> a pedophile for a guy who is opposed by two-thirds of Americans and for a guy who is opposed by one-third of his own party to seek re-election. Yeah. I mean, look, I think it's a really important, Mika said something that's really important about the, about the primary. It, it's a fact, and I, I'm not saying they're right about this, but it's a fact that Steve Bannon and the people around President Trump thought that the day that Mitt Romney came out, you remember when he did that speech in the middle of the primary, it was uh, March or so of, of 2016 when he came out at University of Utah, came out and, and gave that very passionate speech opposing Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Within Donald Trump's world, that was a good day for Donald Trump. They, they all rejoiced. They thought that Romney coming out against Trump was the best thing that could have happened to them at that moment in terms of what his political profile was. And I think when you look at what Bannon is doing, um, he's replaying that in his mind again. He sees Romney as a foil that will help. Roy Moore is Donald Trump at this moment. And he's, he's running the, what they see as the insurgent, outsider, anti-elitist, anti-establishment, anti-democratic, anti-liberal campaign. They're putting aside all of those the questions about his past, about his history, just as they asked Republicans to put aside all the questions about Donald Trump's character and behavior and everything else. And Joe, I look at, you look at the normal math and you say, there's no reason why, none of this makes any sense. But the reality is that in the Republican Party right now, they all live in the same way that Donald Trump is obsessed with 2016. A lot of establishment Republicans Think back to 2016 and they're, say they're, they're, they're fighting the last. They war. are. They're looking in the rearview mirror and saying we 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 doubted him. We never thought he could win. We thought the math didn't make sense for him. But he proved us all wrong. And they're as obsessed with 2016. <clears throat> Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, all of them are as obsessed with 2016 as Donald Trump is. But you, you know, if if you step back from the heat of the moment and look at these two participants, Donald Trump and Steve Bannon. You see both of them playing a part in some, some crazed, demonic, destructive dream that they have about deconstructing America. And if you look at the behavior You're of the Trump it. administration thus far, I mean, basically it's to diminish or destroy existing orders. The FBI, yep. the State Department, Middle East peace, the federal government. The budget? No matter. North Korea? It, it's, it's an individual dream to destroy the existing order with, with, with no thought, very little thought given to what happens <coughs> to America. And how, de how depressing States. that, 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 uh, that uh, there are, he has allies on the Hill and in the media who are joining in attacking the FBI, oh. and, and attacking Joe, you, Bob Mueller. I, it's just, I, I, can't, I can't even believe what I'm reading here. That, it's like they don't understand that Donald Trump will leave the stage. And chances are good he's probably going to leave the stage sooner 
rather than later. Yeah. And maybe that's what they fear, that Bob Mueller is on to something. But don't they understand that the day after Donald Trump leaves town, I, I, you got to hear me here, and we got to go to break, but the day after Donald Trump leaves town, what you said about the Federal Bureau of Investigation will still be around to be read. We will still be able to archive what you said on your editorial pages. We will still be able to archive what you said on your cable news shows. Your attacks of the men and women who serve this country proudly to defend this country and who are on the front lines after September 11th, your attacks in defense of a man who is unworthy of your support will live forever. And those words will be words that you will have to eat every day. Donald Trump's going to leave town. Right? Maybe it's in 2020. Maybe it's before then. Your words in trashing the professionalism of the men and the women of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, your words in trashing the intel community, your words in trashing the American judiciary, your words in trashing diplomats and the State Department, they will live forever. I've had this conversation with people that have been in ad administrations before. Nobody, Mika, ever realizes presidents rent the office. Yeah. They don't own the office. They rent the office. Not king. And everybody that gets in there for some reason thinks they will be there forever. They just won't. They think they know something that everyone else didn't know. Uh, we have barely begun this morning. There's so much to cover. Still ahead on Morning Joe, Donald Trump Jr. is set to testify on Capitol Hill today as an NBC News exclusive reveals new details about the information he was looking for in a meeting with a Russian attorney. Plus the very latest on the Trump administration's plan to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Did Jared Kushner's push for Middle East peace just get a whole lot harder? Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.